Welcome to GTI Predictive Technology. I'm here to do our second tutorial video on iRotor Balancer. Uh, we've done a uh, tutorial video on Balance Pro, which is a shop balancer used for balancing uh, spindles, drive motors, motors, pumps uh, in a test rebuild environment on a rubber pad. Uh, I wrote a balancer what I'm here to demonstrate today and you'll see all the prompts and screen gestures are going to be behind me uh, as I go through the tutorial on how to use this product. Um, I wrote a balancer is specifically for field balancing. So the large pumps, motors, fans, all these things that are bolted and operating in a factory need a trial weight which I'm going to uh, show you how to prompt through and add the trial weight and get your proper phase angle and correction weight whether you're adding or removing weight through this uh, tutorial you'll know exactly how to balance an asset on site now it has two plane capability it also has two plane overhung capability but for this tutorial we're simply going to do one plane on one side because all of those prompts are the same you just follow them through on two planes versus one in the effort to save time here we're going to do uh, this all on a one plane basis so uh, first thing I need to do is start my display recorder behind me so you'll see my screen is up here and I've got a bunch of icons and I'm going to select the one here I rotor balancer which uh, the orientation is in the portrait mode as you can see we get a polar plot and a nice list of prompts up here of exactly what to do before we get to that let's get to our hardware setup anything that we're balancing on a factory floor we're going to want to point uh, put our accelerometer at the same orientation as we point the light for the acceler uh, the uh, tachometer. So if you if I happen to be in the vertical position, I would simply point my tachometer at the vertical position. Now when you're doing multiple planes from plane one to plane two, there is no need to move the tachometer. As long as you're in the same orientation, I can move from the horizontal position of one and move it to two, or I can use two and accel two accelerometers and use the DAQ uh, of the iPad on the back has an AB switch so I can simply switch from plane one to plane two uh, as necessary when I'm recording that data. But in this case we're going to remain in plane one as we uh, go through these prompts you see behind me. Okay, first thing is to select what uh, orientation it's rotating at. In this case it's rotating clockwise. You can't see that but you'll trust me and I've tapped the clockwise button to know that that's what we're recording. And the next thing you'll see there's get estimate and get. Get button means simply to capture the data. We're getting the data. So that's the first thing we do is once our setup and our motor is running we simply hit the get button. And the get button immediately tells me I have a 0.18 inches per second at 249 degrees being my heavy spot and you'll see in the polar plot it's put an OV red mark down here uh, that's indicating that heavy spot. Now I can also switch back to the spectrum and see my spectrum which is a nice thing to do because there's two things you can check to make sure your setup is right. At the top you see a set of blue numbers where my white dot is here and then you see a, 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 group, a pair of red numbers. Blue is blue for the accelerometer. It's measuring the amplitude of that channel one and it's measuring the CPM of that channel one. And you can see my CPM at 2340 and my TAC RPM of 2340 are identical, meaning they're both matching. Everything is good. And below in the spectrum, as you can see, I can pinch in and out, which I'm doing. I can make sure that that cursor blue is on that one times running speed and everything is functioning properly and it's looking only at one times running speed it's not out here looking at these peaks out here or any other noise that might be in the environment that we don't want to look at both the tachometer and the accelerometer are matching its peaks so we've now hit our first prompt and it's told us that at 69 degrees it wants me to enter a trial weight so let's go to the estimate button and I've estimated this rotor to be about four pounds. There's a two inch trial radius and a balancing speed of around 2000 RPM. Uh, and it's telling me at the very bottom here, 
it's recommending 0 0.03 ounces, which is exactly what the screw weighs. I've weighed it on the scale. So we will make sure that we type 0 0.03 into, or that it's in that box at 0 0.03 ounces, which it is right here where you see my white prompt. And it wants me to put it at 69 degrees. So we'll turn this, turn this motor off. And we will put that, I've marked this 90, 270, 180. We're gonna put it right where it says at about 70 degrees. And that's where we're gonna put our trial weight. And then we turn the motor back on. And again, in the spectrum, we can make sure everything is where it's supposed to be and lining up, which it is. And the next prompt down is a get button with vibration with trial weight. So we know we've added our trial weight, so it is vibration with trial weight. We'll now tap that button. If I can tap it, there we go. And now it's gone from a 0.18 to a 0.12, which is in heading in the right direction. And the heavy spot is now at 311 degrees, which it's changed. So when we hit the next button down in the row here, as you can see, correction weight, I'll tap that it's going to tell me to put exactly 0 0.03 ounces, which is the size of my screw, at about 110 degrees. So let's do that. And let's look at that polar plot. I'm going to switch over to see exactly where it wants us to put that correction weight. So we're going to turn our motor off and we're going to remove that correction weight that we had at 60 degrees and we're going to move it more towards 100 degrees. So I, I put the weight as close to 110 degrees as possible. And now I'm going to hit vibration after correction, which is the next prompt down. And you can see it's telling me my heavy, I'm at a 0 0.02, which is now at an acceptable ISO level. But it's also telling me that I can make an additional correction by adding a small amount of weight at 168 degrees. So let's do that. We don't have anything uh, that small because it's telling me 0 0.00 ounces, which is, if it had another decimal place, it, it might show me a value, but it's very, very small because we're already within ISO specs. But it's giving me a continuous heavy spot, so let's make that correction. We're gonna put a small piece of electric tape at 168 degrees, exactly where it's telling us. So there's our 180. So 168 is just to one side of that 180. Now that doesn't weigh much, but it's enough to make a correction. And we're gonna run again. And as you can see, I'm gonna hit the get button again, vibration after correction. And now we're at a 0 .0076, which is far below any ISO spec. You can see my final vibration here in the middle of my report that I'm about to make is dead center of the target. This is red mark over here is our original vibration and everything looks good. So let's just go to our report button, which is down here on the right left, on the right, I should say. And you can see my report comes out here. I've got my original vibration at 0.18 in red here. I've got my vibration with trial weight at one. Sorry about that. Uh, I also have my vibration correction in the green here and then my trim correction there. I also have my nice polar plot of exactly what was done here onto the right. I can click an image, pull an image out of the library or take a picture of this, which I can't do because it's going to uh, take our screen off the wall if I do that. It gives us a nice map of where we took this data, which is in Manchester, New Hampshire. You'll see that pull up nicely. Uh, it gives me a nice signature page. I can put my signature in here and that is put to the report and any notes I might have. So once I'm done, I can simply hit email the report. It puts it in a nice email for me, as you can see with my signature on the bottom, and I can send that to whomever uh, recipient I point it to. So well, that's how simple this is to use. Uh, this is a full tutorial. Anybody that follows what I've just shown them can balance just about anything in the world. Uh, furthermore, there is a help section on each one of our apps, both iRotor Balancer and Balance Pro. And if you look in the help section of both, everything that I've taught you here is listed and, and in uh, written form so that you can follow a step-by-step -step direction right on the app. 
and we're going to be posting these videos on the web so that also can be viewed directly from your iPad while you're out trying to balance an asset. You can watch this video and know exactly step by step what to do. So we thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to us at gtipredictive.com or you can reach us at 603-669-5993. Thank you for your attention.